which is part of Karingai Chase National Park. The only way that the people that are living here can access this site is by boat. There are several little communities like this around Karingai Chase National Park. Thank you all very much for giving your time up today to come and join us to do some bush regen here in the park. But just a little bit on, on floating land care, we got given a grant through the Environmental Trust. So it was a two year grant, this is, this is the second year of that, that grant and it's going really well. I think this is the tenth um, floating land care trip we've done. The Weeds of National Significance program, that's the mob that I work with um, and it's a very um, sort of one-of-a-kind type program that in the country because it works with all the different states and territories and the Australian government to do something about widespread weeds and a couple years ago um, they added 12 more and six of those are asparagus weeds. Um, the first one that was listed was bridal creeper and it's one that we do have here in, in the Sydney area not as bad as we do in the rest of the country in South Australia and, and down in the more temperate regions um, it's really horrible. They made such good inroads with biocontrol and they said well we need to address the rest of the threats um, of asparagus weeds and I mean most people will know ground asparagus the one that's here that we'll be looking at today and then there's also climbing asparagus so there are actually as I said six new species that are listed as weeds of national significance what we try to do in the national program is provide resources information and also do strategic national management so that when we're working on widespread weeds we're not wasting our money so we do that more at the national level we sort of say all right where can we best contain the spread nationally um, so for instance with climbing asparagus we're looking at where where's the southernmost areas in, in the country where climbing asparagus is now um, let's put a containment line in there work with all the regional groups the state groups the national groups and and keep that from spreading any further south for instance. We've done a lot of that work with Bidu Bush which some of you might know um, from Baron Joey over there and, and most of our coastline um, and so we have strategic northern and southern containment lines in New South Wales that stop it from moving into Queensland and into Victoria so it's a, a really um, participatory project but it's the same sort of thing we like to sort of mimic at regional and local levels too so you know here in national parks we're working with local governments and councils and, and folks around us to make sure that we do strategic management and don't just throw all the money away you know clearing stuff that uh, in a patch that's going to be um, you know built out later or something like that um, asparagus weeds are weeds that were brought in years ago by the ornamental industry for um, use in gardens and things like that. Um, the nursery industry, we do a lot of work with them trying to get weeds out of the nursery industry so that they're not sold and we always sort of say it's, it's in your grandmother's garden. You know, these things are all in hanging baskets in people's back gardens somewhere. So this is here where we started our bush regen contract uh, targeting the climbing asparagus. This whole area here had climbing asparagus into these coral trees, into all these trees and you basically couldn't see the house here. We've got a native vine up here and you can see the climbing asparagus is getting into this vine over here. So um, if you don't have your eye in, it's not easy to see, but it's definitely climbing up there. These little ones down here, you can see are starting to come up. So while this has had a contract of bush regenerators working for approximately five years, without the follow-up, this stuff will take over again. See how it's climbed up into this native tree Originally, like the other trees on this side, climbing asparagus was all up in those trees, which have since been treated. But this tree isn't looking particularly healthy because originally it was covered in climbing asparagus. It's got a really good example of the, uh, the berries, the fruit of the climbing asparagus, which are a dark purple black in color in comparison to the ground asparagus, which the berries are red. These berries are very attractive to birds and that's one of the key vectors of the birds eating the berries and then distributing the seeds through their scats further into the bushland. So we're going to try and cut some of these berries out and bag them because we're trying to get as many of these fruits away so the birds don't spread the weeds. It's got thorns on it this plant so just got to make sure you've got your gloves on and your long, uh, long sleeves to try and prevent scratches. Just these have a few thorns on them, so trying to get it out of your way so you can really get into the base. What I'm doing here is trying to cut the roots off the base of this plant so I can get, and when that's called crowning by cutting the roots, so I'm just trying to get the core of the 
They're a hardy little plant, which is probably why they're surviving so well. So, so here we go, I've got the crown of this out. And I'm just going to cut in to actually show the difference between the crowns and the roots. So these are all the, the feeder roots. This is how it gets its nutrients and water. Um, but the really important part, so you don't need to remove all these roots from the ground. The really important thing that you have to get is this rhizome. And that rhizome is running, you can see all the sprouts with the shoots coming out of the rhizome there. I'll cut those away and then we'll go and have a look at the actual rhizome. And again, this is, this is the key part, getting rid of this bit is what you need to, to do. I'm going to try and cut through this so you can see it. There we go. So you can see there's multiple parts of that rhizome in there, hidden, buried all in these roots. And any of this will re-sprout if it's left in the ground. So we've got a pretty good sized climbing asparagus, asparagus plumosus here. Um, climbing right up into the canopy, you know, what, 10, 15 meters maybe. Um, dominating the tree canopy here with the native vine, you can see as well, wrapped in together with it. So all of these stems here are asparagus plumosus. Um, one of the things people will do in really dense infestations is we cut away a bit from the top oops, and a bit from the bottom. You can leave this, the vines hanging in the trees. This is going to be far too high for us to be able to access the fruits. Um, so we'll have to come back to this site repeatedly to make sure we get new seedlings that will germinate once it's the vine is removed, but you can leave the vines up in the trees. Okay, you can see some of those big spiny bracts there. They're quite hard and tough. Again, this is our native vine here, so we've got to be careful to work around that one. So we can see here, this is the actual native vine. And it's just twined right inside there with this, with this, there it is there. So hopefully that'll be fine and put that one over there. So you can see the foliage here of the plant. It's new growth just shooting up. There's a nice young, young shoot there. Oh, see now I've broken that off. There's the rhizome. And you can see the, um, you can see a new, new shoot coming out there. That sort of whitish colored um, new sprout there. So that'll form another new new bit of foliage that'll climb up into the canopy. So that's just a, that's its own little crown there. We've just taken that out. We'll bag that later. I'll just leave that there for the moment. So you can see this is a native vine coming here and coming across the top here um, and intertwined under there. And, and again, here's more native growth here. Um, intertwined in all that is this massive asparagus crown. Well, let me snip a few roots here. Help. I'm gonna try and yeah. leave it out from this side. Yeah, it's starting to go there. Okay, there we go. Wow. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> that's a monster. That was a bit of work. Yeah. I'll go up and find. <laughs> well done. And you can even see if we look back down here, you can see this is a new one that's come up. Another little crown just getting ready to take off. So that, that's the native vine again. Oh no, no, sorry, that's a bit of asparagus. So we'll get that out too because that's still got a still got a small crown attached to it. You can see that that's the, the crown that's growing from. But this piece has been, you can see how it's white, it's been under the soil and it started to sprout from this part of the, um, this part of the stem. What we have found is that will potentially set a root. Um, so just, just keep an eye out for that when you're, um, you can almost see there, it looks like possibly a new crown starting to form there. So <clears throat> just keep an eye out for that. And if you remember before we had that native vine, we've cleared away, I'm gonna put that back into this hole just to give that a little mixing in with the soil there. Cover that back up and move on to the next crown. Hopefully see this defoliate and the vine will die standing here in the tree. 
and open up the canopy again to natural light. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was good. It was good, man. It was oh, yeah. You also did a good job down there. It's all done. Oh, that's probably what the miners are on about. Could be, yeah. the information we know about asparagus weeds, we gathered it together and we put it into this manual. So it'll have diff detailed information about the six, there are seven different species and how to control them. Um, and case studies on what people have done and what's been successful and what hasn't been successful and, and how, you, how you tackle these big problems. And all this information is available online, um, free of charge, and anyone can, can use it and access it.